So this here is the Kalashnikov library, starting back here with the oldest ones and going chronologically this way, and then some of the bigger ones are down here. This is uh, most of the f uh, books written about the Kalashnikov platform or the man or its influence in history. But you can see this is quite a big shelf. Some of these books are pretty large. Some of them are actually kind of small. And together, they weigh a lot. So I made up these. Uh, it's a project I've had in mind for a while, and it took a little time to create these. And uh, this is a way to get that library down to a manageable level. I get in here without breaking any of them. So uh, this isn't uh, this is just something I wanted to use as a visual aid in uh, a way to help uh, keep track of uh, the library. All right, so came up with uh, these cards, and we'll take a look. We've got uh, starting off with uh, some of the must-haves. These are some of the best books that you'd want to get. Uh, then we got some from the old focus there from the old uh, to the new and this way I can have the whole library here in my hand uh, for videos and stuff we can talk about some of the uh, first times we see the AK-47 in life magazines uh, we can see some of the first manuals translated so I have some of these broke down as to if they're manuals or if they're uh, books or like these are magazines so this is uh, one of the first times we see the AK-47, uh, or the AKS-74. Uh, it's one of the first times we see the AK-74. Uh, we've got some of the first times uh, we heard the word crank. This was just a really cool uh, article on bayonets back then. we got some of the first books, first picture book, uh, fiction book with the uh, AK-47s in, in the Civil War. Uh, some of the... Uh, books that are out there that are uh, like this one written in Finland or Sweden or is that Finland Finland and then uh, some Russian books we get some of the US books and I don't have every single book in this uh, deck that are in the actual library I actually left out a bunch like this that are kind of US made reprints of manuals or just accumulations of uh, like articles and things, I, I didn't include all of those. Some of them, like this one, have multiple publishings, multiple covers. Uh, so there's, if you're collecting a, or acquiring a bunch of books, these are actually like $5 books, so it's neat to get all three covers. I got Martin's uh, Bayonet book, of course. Another Russian book. I got the first printing of the Grim Reaper. And back in 2009, when Guns and Ammo first started, doing a series, an annual, on the AK-47. You got the first version of the AK Encyclopedia, the Kalashnikov Encyclopedia. It's a more Russian book. Then you get uh, second, Guns and Ammo. You get the first handbook by uh, Eric Lawrence and Mike Pannone. Uh, practical use of the AK-47. Uh, some of the books were written by Kalashnikov, so this is a way to, to get those books quickly. This one's written by his daughter, another Guns and Ammo. Uh, Guns and Ammo magazine annual. We've got a Canadian reloading book that was written. And another reason to do this is when I have them on the shelf, not only is it hard to keep track of them all or you know keep track of which ones are out there, but in what order. Uh, so this way I can see when things came on uh, the scene. So and it wasn't until 2011. All these other books were written before they finally came along with the reloading book. And this was somebody in Canada that did that. You get a Polish language bayonet book. Uh, then you get another Russian bayonet book. And then another Polish bayonet book. So you can see there's like little trends or in the history of these things in the, in the library. Uh, another Guns and Ammo. And then you get the second Grim Reaper. And then you see this Athlon Press or Harris Tactical uh, starts to come out with their AK annual. And we start to see one of theirs as long as well as a Guns and Ammo version each year. So there's the 2013s, there's the 2014s, and you can see there's no books being published 
or if they're I don't have them in this deck. Uh, then we've got the new uh, Kalashnikov Encyclopedia, and that, that book written in Finland uh, was reprinted. This is literally the best thing you could ever get as far as anything in the library, but it costs a lot of money. We've got uh, Eric Lawrence's second book, really good practical guide to using an AK-47. More of the guides. You got Eric Rob Stotts' uh, uh, books with tons of pictures. He has more access than anybody. Uh, real good series that started in sixteen. I think he's up to uh, the sixteenth edition or something. Like he's he does an edition quite often. He uh, has a lot of pictures and he's sharing those. Uh, we've got uh, more of the annuals, and then finally Vickers' book. And then I just played around with the decks again, or with some of the images here, and have some of the different, like the Russian books, the uh, Chinese and Japanese, uh, the stuff from Finland, Canada, Poland, Czechoslovakia, and England, I guess, or Great Britain. And again, these are what I consider to be the ones that are the most useful, so that I can use these as visual aids for uh, doing videos about the library, as we review them, for example, I might do a review on one uh, book and then I can reference other books without having to pull six of them off the shelf in the library all the time. And uh, it'll help with uh, keeping track of which ones I still need to acquire for the library. So uh, thanks for this, uh, for sticking with this uh, preview of the, the library deck, I guess I'm calling it. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave them uh, as I have more ability we'll do more uh, ak-47 guru podcasts and of course we'll have these to use in that so uh thanks to our patrons for giving us the time to work on projects like this and uh see you next time thanks for watching the guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a ccw class every year practice at least once a month and carry every day thanks for watching gunwebsites.com